Hi, Mr. Black kicking in here, and just a reminder, vectors, of course, are very important. Their length of their tail has to do with their magnitude, so later we'll have to make certain we're doing these proportionally, very exact, and of course their head shows their direction. We don't call it the head in this class, we typically call it the tip. We've been calling it tail to tip when we do our vector addition. So every vector is a tail and a tip. Vectors need to be drawn to scale. In our first lab, you'll be doing this. And when you establish a scale for a vector, you have to stay with it. For example, if I have a scale of every centimeter of my tail is going to be five newtons of force, then my first vector, which is two centimeters, represents a total force of 10 newtons. And I can do that by multiplying it by my scale. Two centimeters times five newtons per centimeter and that helps me establish my scale. So that's very important. If we go ahead and take a look at the next vector on which is seven centimeters then multiplying that by my scale factor that would end up being a 35 newton force. So that vector is showing 35 newtons of force and my final one would be showing 12 times 5 which is 60 newtons of force. This will be very important in graphical representation of vectors. So look at this here. If we're trying to figure out which of these would be 80 newtons, and we have a scale of 1 centimeter equals 10 newtons, which is the correct answer? Good, that would be B, because B is 8 centimeters, so that's a 1. Which of these here would be 110 newtons? And so you can see C is 11 centimeters and D is 14. I won't waste my time with A and B. And of course, looking at our scale, the answer would be C. So this will be very important, no matter what the direction may be. We can tell just by the length of the vectors that we draw in the lab this week what their magnitude will be. Uh, remember the easy days of one-dimensional forces, one-dimensional motion, when you could just have a simple plus or minus system, or maybe an east or a west, or maybe even a north and a south, or an up and a down. Those were the easy ways we used to look at vectors. But as we start moving into two dimensions, we're going to find out that's just not going to cut it anymore. We're going to need another system. So we're going to have to look at a system that's going to show direction along either both an X dimension and a Y dimension. Now that can be done pretty easily if you put in an axis and try to look at a Cartesian coordinate system. We can have the X be perhaps a horizontal and Y be vertical uh, or whatever the two dimensions are that you choose. And later on when we do components of vectors, that's the exact system we'll be using. Um, but what I want to show you tonight is something a little bit different. If we start to focus on not the uh, X and Y Cartesian, but suppose we're talking about an East-West-North-South system. There is a convention that's used in physics, which really threw me for a loop because it's very different than a normal compass. In a compass, you'll notice that North is 0 degrees and East is 90 degrees. Well, that's not the way they'll show uh, north-south, east-west direction of vectors in physics. Instead, east, if you see my 360-degree protract here, is set up to be the zero mark. And then we measure all the vectors counterclockwise. So north, since it's 90 degrees counterclockwise, away from east would be 90 degrees, west would be 180, and south would be not 180, as in a compass, but 270. That is the system that's used in physics. So this vector right here, for instance, we could talk about it being a certain number of newtons at a direction of 40 degrees. Because of our zeros here, and we count up, we have 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees counterclockwise. So that vector can be expressed as 40 degrees counterclockwise rotation from east. And we can just simply give its direction as 40 degrees. Similarly, if you look at this one, and I set it up so zero is due east, we see we have 90 degrees to north, 180, and then as I continue, we see we go to 240 degrees. So you can give the direction of this as 240 degrees.
going to also discuss how we're going to add and subtract vectors both algebraically and graphically. And to do that, let's take a look first of all at what we already know. We've studied vectors in one dimension and here on this screen you'll see that there are many different ways that vectors can combine in one dimension. But primarily what we're looking at is vectors that are one dimensional are either going to be working together or they're going to be working against each other. When we have vectors that are all going in the same direction, the sum of those vectors is going to be the vector resultant. When we have vectors that are opposite each other, they will cancel out parts of each other um, and so we will see that we will be basically looking at subtraction of vectors. So in this particular situation that we've, uh, we're have we looking at here, six different vector diagrams, these are all in one dimension. We have five horizontal, one, one set that's vertical, and you can pick any of these examples to see that we simply have vector addition and vector subtraction. So we're going to carry that theme into our two-dimensional vectors and add a little bit more meat to our study. Okay, so here's a nice review question to tie it all together. Uh, while the cable pulls on a 225 kilogram crate with 7.0 times 10 to the 2 newtons at 0 degrees direction, a worker pushes it due east as well with a force of 3.5 times 10 to the second newtons. Together, what force do they create in the direction of 0 degrees? Does anyone realize that the 5.3 times 10 to the 2 newtons must be force due to friction? I wonder. Did you try to add the two? vectors that were going in the same direction first, the 700 newtons and the 35 newtons, or sorry, the 350 newtons. Uh, that would have been an easy approach to take. You can just put them tail to tip, as you see here, and together they would make a resultant vector, remembering that term, resultant vector, of 7 Point zero times 10 to the second plus 3.5 times 10 to the second. So they would be both working together with 10.5 times 10 to the second newtons, or in correct scientific notation, 1.05 times 10 to the third newtons. Okay, so that makes it easy. I can just represent those two vectors with one single vector at zero degrees working at 1.05 times 10 to the third newtons, or 1,005 newtons. Now, later on we'll have to deal with sig figs and how I added that, but that's not my final answer. They want to know the net force, so I'm not going to round yet. Next thing, we have these two vectors here, with the 1.05 times 10 to the third newtons, and this, which is headed at 180 degrees. Now, they're on the same dimension, so I put it tail to tip, and can draw my resultant from the beginning or the tail of the first vector to the tip of the second vector. As we see here in red, that would be my resultant vector of those two. And we can see that what we'd be doing in that case is still vector addition, but the 5.3 times 10 to the 2 newtons is in the negative direction. So you could just as easily say we're taking 1.05 times 10 to the third newtons and subtracting not negative 5.3 times 10 to the second newtons. I wanted to make it so it's easier. So recall I can do this. I can take this and divide it by 10 in order to make my power of 10 10 times higher. That way the exponents match. They're both times 10 to the third. And so once I add those together, I get my answer 0.52 times 10 to the third newtons. And that would still be, as we can see with the red vector, in the zero degree direction, still due east. But to put it in proper scientific notation, since I have to have 5.2, make that 10 times more, I make my exponent 10 times less. 
And so that would be my final answer. I take my single resultant vector and we see that it's 5.2 times 10 to the 2 newtons. That hasn't changed. And there it is, my resultant vector, which would be 520 newtons. But I did in scientific notation to show the significant digits. And then when we check my direction, there's my 360 degree compass. I, of course, turn it so east is zero and it would be in the direction of zero degrees.